Hello, and welcome to this talk focused on seamless, full-stack development, using Flutter and Dart Frog to supercharge your development team. During this time, while we will touch on some technical details about Dart on the back end, we will also be discussing the change that we are starting to see in teams that are currently taking on this technology shift. This is something we are excited to see and talk about as bringing front end and back end development teams together seems to be unlocking some benefits that we could only dream about in the past, but are now becoming a reality. Before we get started though, a bit about myself. Hi, my name is Tom Ara. I'm currently the director of product development at Very Good Ventures, where I'm responsible for all of our internal and external tooling and product development. Essentially, if you see something that VGV is doing that is outside the area of pure consulting services, that's under my domain. The main thing that most people in this audience would know us from is our open source work with things like very good CLI, very good analysis, and a few other dozen packages that we have released in the past. I've been in the Flutter space since about late 2018 when I was at BMW. I was part of the team in the Chicago tech office that helped bring Flutter in to help solve the business problems we were facing when it came to iOS and Android product parity. From a product management point of view, this solved a big issue and given my engineering background, it was also easy for me to pick up and understand when talking with my development team. That's enough about me, let's get into the content. Today, I'm going to give a bit of an overview of Dart Frog so that we can all understand the same context. How we're seeing Dart Frog used today, and then we're gonna talk about the changes that we're starting to see and hope to keep fostering in development teams as they start to adopt Dart on the back end. So let's get started. So for anyone who may not already know what Dart Frog is, let's give a quick overview and background as to why Very Good Ventures thought it was a good idea to invest in creating it in the first place. Given the extensive list of projects and clients that VGV works with, we've had a lot of real world experience that unfortunately just led us to be frustrated with always relying on a backend team to play catch up and get the changes that we needed done in order to unblock the front end work that we were focusing on. With that context, we started to think about what we could do to make our teams and in turn our clients' teams faster and Dart Frog is where we've landed so far. If you have seen the Dart Frog documentation in the past, this should look familiar, but it's also a great one-liner to explain our basis for creating it. Overall, Dart Frog is a fast, minimalistic backend framework for Dart. In creating it, we wanted to prioritize speed of the server and response times, make it lightweight so it's easy to just pick up and use, and ensure that it's using Dart so that our front end and back end are not just talking the same language, but also have the ability to share code between them when appropriate. That last piece has become more and more of a bonus as we have seen Dart Frog get adopted in our own projects over the past few years. In looking at the timeline, you can see this wasn't something we just threw together. While we do have a team focused on our tooling efforts, we do also need to balance that with running a consulting business at the same time. The idea for a backend framework using Dart was coming up in a few of our client projects back in 2021. In early 2022, we were able to start doing some experimentation with creating the framework, mostly for some proof of concepts that we were working on. Then we were able to turn that into full development in the second half of 2022, as it became a key piece of the Flutter News Toolkit which we'll talk about in the next slide. It finally was released to the public in January, 2023, but was still in a pre 1.0 state until August. So while it may be a lightweight framework, it also wasn't something that we wanted to build quickly and rush out the door. We did a lot of internal iterations and changes on the framework itself during this time to ensure that it was as stable as possible API wise before it was released. Since that first pre 1.0 release, we've seen a lot of other products besides just the Dart Frog runtime released as well. This includes things like our auth, gen, test, and WebSocket libraries, a Dart Frog CLI tool, as well as a Visual Studio extension to make development just a bit easier. On top of that, we've seen community feature requests and changes get merged in as well. So if anyone in the audience here today happens to be one of those contributors, a big thank you from me and the Very Good Venture team overall for stepping up and being involved. If we go back to the original concept, it actually looks something like this. 
we had a need in building the Flutter News Toolkit to allow content providers a quick and easy way to hook up their existing content management systems into a Flutter-based application. We knew that in these content organizations, web developers would probably be on staff, but Flutter or native developers may not be a skill set that they'd have readily available. The thought was, if we could provide an easy way for web developers to hook up their content and have the application template quickly and easily light up with their actual articles and stories, that they would be more willing to invest the time and effort into having a native app if there was little effort to apply on the front end side. This matches the back end for front end architecture that has been creeping up more and more over the past few years and seemed like a great starting point, not just for this project, but a framework around this effort overall. This pattern allows for more flexibility for any product and for some teams, it's the key difference in being able to let them scale, not just to many users, but internally to many teams as well. So given that background, let's talk a little bit about how we at Very Good Ventures have been using Dart Frog so far. While we do continue to push that backend for frontend architecture, some of our project implementations have varied a bit from that original sketch. The nice thing is that the Dart Frog framework is flexible enough to provide functionality for all these other use cases and for us as well. One key area that we have used Dart Frog has been in the Google I.O. showcase project that we launched last year, I.O. Flip. When creating these kinds of projects, we work with Google not just to push the boundaries of Flutter, but also Dart as well. When we were designing the architecture for the I.O. Flip game, it was clear that we were going to need some backend component for all the features that were being asked for. While we could have done this with cloud functions, like we did the previous year in the IO pinball game, that solution also exposed issues with keeping the front end and back end in sync. With that in mind, the idea to use Dart Frog as more of an API server with shared code between the front end and back end was born. If you are interested in seeing more details behind the IO flip project, you can go ahead and take a look at the code as it's available on GitHub in the Flutter organization. The screenshots here are cut down versions of the pub spec files for both the application and the API server side. I've removed all the basic third party dependencies so that we can showcase and focus on the local packages that we use on each side. While we typically follow this pattern of local packages for our layered architecture, it also makes it very easy to share code between the front end and back end and keep it all in sync all the time. If you look closer at these pub spec files, you'll see a handful of packages are listed in both. These are the pieces of code that clearly needed to be on both sides of the application, including the config repository or game domain and script machine. Note that we're not sharing all the code between the application and the API server, only the pieces that are truly needed. With this setup, we no longer need to have multiple PRs, reviews, deployments, just for us to test and release changes in those packages. Instead, we're able to catch breaking changes with unit testing and those annoying sync issues, which many of us have experienced in the past, are now a thing of the past. One other area that we have seen grow, especially over the last year, has been the support for getting Dart Frog up and running on different cloud platforms and service providers. At Very Good Ventures, a lot of our clients rely on Google Cloud and Firebase, but we have also seen deployments on AWS via their App Runner service, DigitalOcean, and Clever Cloud. We also have been working with the folks at Globe to ensure that Dart Frog deployments work well in their service and that those deployments are super simple to get done so you can focus on writing features instead of maintaining deployment scripts. That last point, the change in focus for the development team, really leads into the main part that I wanna cover in this talk. While we focused on the backend for frontend implementation to start with, the code sharing idea was obviously knocking around as well. We wanted to see in practice how introducing this capability of truly shared code between the frontend and backend into a development team would change their patterns. And the IO Flip project gave us that opportunity. My time at BMW showed that a backend for frontend architecture 
gave the application developers a lot of flexibility. But given the frameworks available at the time, also had them context switching between Dart and TypeScript code throughout the day. And they had to deal with those sync issues between code bases, which we just talked about. Looking back at that experience and now seeing Dart Frog in action, I wonder how much faster we could have been if we had a Dart backend framework available to us back in 2019. Everyone here already knows the power that Flutter provides to front-end developers and teams in targeting multiple platforms and screens with one code base. Overall, this isn't really a problem for those back-end teams because their code just lives in one location, the cloud. But in this modern day of application development, there isn't many features that don't have some back-end component involved. As soon as that happens, the efforts in coordinating code changes, testing, bug fixes, release schedules, all come together and these deployments balloon up. You end up with engineering teams drawing lines in the sand to attribute issues or changes to one side or the other, and it just becomes a mess. So while we have made some progress in bringing some engineering teams closer together, we still have some work to do. So what can we do with that backend team to try and bring them into the fold? This is where we are seeing Dart as a great unifier across an engineering organization, rather than just a team or two. We have seen and heard from big names, including BMW, and actually just last month, Geico here in the US, that they're seeing their developers turn from native platform engineers into product engineers. And that's thanks to Dart and Flutter. What if we could do the same transformation for the backend side of things? Now we are talking about an overall organization change, evolving from a focus on the nuances of a tech stack that was chosen and focusing more on the product itself. One of the key things that our industry has learned over the last 20 years is that you want to move more and more of the people making decisions about your product and the ones building your product closer to the actual users. My question is, why does that tend to stop with just the front end teams? Isn't the back end a key piece of the shipping product these days? What happens if we start to move all of engineering to be closer to the actual thing that gets shipped to the end users? The goal is to break down those dividing lines between teams, organizations, departments, to better serve your customers. At the end of the day, that's what they're buying from you your product. By attempting to move all the engineering work happening into one consistent language and framework, we're getting closer than ever to this reality. Now I know there are probably some of you saying, hey, didn't we try this already with JavaScript and TypeScript? And you know what? You're right. <laughs> we as an industry did. Frameworks like Node and Express React and Angular all attempted this, but I think we know that they didn't truly solve the issue. There were always trade-offs that had to be made, mostly due to the choice of language that was being used. And here's where we really get to flex a little bit, I think, given the maturity of Dart as a language. Given that we have been focused on using Dart and Flutter over the past six years, we've been able to see these advantages in full effect. As Dart has continued to mature, it's been able to bring all developers along for the ride in creating more modern and safe code. As null safety has spread through the community and the third-party packages that we all use, we're finding it easier to write and test predictable code. Also, the fact that it compiles down to a native binary means there has never been an issue with performance. Your user shouldn't be able to see a difference in performance just because of what technology you decided to use. And with Dart, we don't see any unnecessary slowdowns. On the Flutter side of things, it's become just as mature as well. If you really need to do something that is platform specific, you're always able to jump down into the native language and framework for any given platform, making sure you don't need to compromise on your feature sets just because you're using Flutter. With the current powerful rendering engine, and it's something that the Flutter team continues to keep iterating and pushing on, all of those features are going to look smooth and polished across every device. 
And finally, we all know and love the hot reload and hot restart workflow in Flutter development, allowing you to shortcut the whole build and run sequence. With Dart Frog, we were able to bring that same workflow to the backend side of development, and it's truly a magical experience to see everything automatically refreshing and just working so very quickly after you make those changes. As engineers, we want to believe that moving to a new framework will solve all the issues we're facing when it comes to a certain feature or requirement. Or sometimes we just think that it's a cool new thing and we want to try it out. But for the very first time in my career, I'm seeing that using Flutter and Dart and Dart Frog are making products better and organizations faster than ever before. It's a big claim, but I wouldn't be saying it if we haven't seen it in practice. I think this is something that we're going to be hearing more and more about in the years to come. And hopefully everyone here has the ear of their engineering leaders and can get this point through to them as well. When an engineering team is firing on all cylinders and not blocked by their technology choices, there becomes a new world of possibilities for every business to take advantage of. When that happens, product changes and feature updates to stay competitive are easy and the new features you actually want to work on finally make their way to the top of the priority list, instead of continuously having to squash bugs just to keep up. It's taken a lot of time and effort to be able to realize this goal, but it feels like, as a community, we're at a tipping point. While my focus is obviously on using Dart Frog, we're seeing other frameworks like ServerPod, Conduit, and Angel all start to gain traction as well. While it's great to see Dart expand its reach, it also feels like unless it's paired with Flutter on the front end, it's not meeting its full potential. That's what we're talking about a lot at Very Good Ventures with our clients, and I hope everyone here is just as excited about that vision as we are. Thank you very much for taking the time to listen to this today. I hope this inspires you to take a look at Dart Frog or Dart on the server in general, and maybe you can be the person in your team pushing this vision for your organization as well. If you want to stay up to date with Very Good Ventures going forward, you can sign up for our monthly newsletter on our website, verygood.ventures, and just fill out the form. And if this talk has inspired you to take on a new project and you're looking for some expert help to get you up and running quickly, feel free to reach out via the Contact Us button on our website.